Hi, my name is Satyajit and with me is Zhao Dong. We are from the network engineering team in Meta. We are going to talk about Arcadia, which is a framework for evaluating the performance of an AI cluster. Arcadia is a joint collaboration between hardware teams, network and AI systems team. Following is the agenda for this talk. We'll talk about the motivation. Then Zhao Dong is going to talk about the system design and a few example use cases that we have solved so far. We'll then talk about the limitations and next steps for Arcadia. Let's start with the motivation. At a very high level, AI cluster performance can be influenced by multiple factors across multiple infrastructure pillars, such as compute, memory, and network. Performance is also influenced by models that are running on the cluster their parameters and the job scheduling logic. Focusing on a particular pillar in isolation can lead to local optimization and may lead to suboptimal conclusions. From an organizational perspective, this leads to lower ROI due to the absence of joint optimization. This is where Arcadia helps. Arcadia provides a unified framework where each pillar is modeled. This framework is shared by different teams that own individual infrastructure pillar. Due to the shared ownership, it acts as a single source of truth regarding the capabilities and constraints of a pillar. With this knowledge, we can evaluate an initiative in a particular infrastructure pillar with complete knowledge about other constraints in different other pillars. We expect Arcadia to be used in AI operations, where we are able to simulate actions performed during day-to-day -day operations before they are actually performed to see the impact of it in production. We can optimize maintenance in such a way such that the impact of it is not observed by the jobs that are running in production. Arcadia can be used to optimize the model, their configurations, with complete knowledge about cluster capabilities. Finally, it also acts as a good debugging tool where you can replay a scenario that has happened in production to figure out what was the root cause of the problem. I will now pass it on to Zhao Dong who will talk about system design. Thank you. Hi, my name is Zhao Dong. And now I will walk you through the system design of Arcadia. Arcadia is an advanced system with a well-structured architecture that can handle a wide range of inputs, providing a holistic view of the system's performance and reliability. Arcadia accepts various essential inputs, such as long-range plan of AI systems and models, a network topology, routing protocols, data center floor plans, etc. And furthermore, it incorporates considerations of failure domains, ensuring a comprehensive evaluation of the system's performance and reliability. At the heart of the Arcadia system is an orchestrator, and this orchestrator coordinates the simulation of various components, including the job scheduling, compute, and memory, and also the network behavior across different levels. Arcadia provides us a wide range of outputs also, such as the AI training and inference performance metrics, resource utilizations, and metrics for reliability and availability. The system offers a comprehensive set of metrics that allow stakeholders to, anal to analyze the impact of different factors. As a result, those decision makers can make informed choices and decisions to optimize the system performance. Since Arcadia is covering many different aspects of the AI training cluster, it is important to tailor it for different use cases. Therefore, we provide three modes that cover different levels of details. We have packet mode using packet levels network simulator, which captures all this, these hardware details. And we also have a flow mode using a flow level simulator and this mode can capture the difference between topology, routing, and basic flow control algorithms. And there is also a job mode, or we can call it a fast mode. In this mode, we only care about the high-level job placements, and the network compute memory details are all ignored. And this mode can capture the difference between different training cluster sizing, 
job placement algorithms, and reliability. In terms of speed, the packet mode is almost a real-time simulation, which means that it will take a while to simulate a whole day. And to, it's, it's basically taking a whole day to simulate all the events happening in the cluster in a day. And the flow mode is a thousand times faster, giving us opportunity to investigate a longer-term behavior of a training cluster. The fast mode is pretty lightweighted. Basically, any production-scale training cluster can be simulated within minutes for full calendar year. Now, let's dive a little bit deeper to the orchestrator. The orchestrator is essentially a multi-level discrete event simulator. At the job level, we capture all possible AI training job events, such as the job NQ, DQ, saving or loading checkpoints, and also job failures. We have a job generator that can generate realistic jobs following the production distribution, and also a failure generator that can generate all possible failures with a like, calibrated mean time between failure and recovery from our production data. And below the job level, we capture the actual job execution trace, which are the workload events, including the compute events such as matrix multiplications, memory events like loading datasets, or communication events like different network collectives. So those events will form a DAC, which is it's a graph that can be defined in the job spec. And the events from different jobs may have mutual impacts, which will all be captured at this level. And by simulating the concurrent jobs with different workloads, Arcadia is capable of simulating a very complex dynamics within the training cluster and help us evaluate the performance with better fidelity. Now let's move to the network simulator component, which is another core component of Arcadia. Since the network involves multiple jobs and their iterations, accurately simulating the network performance is pretty difficult and very challenging to scale up. So we have developed algorithms that can segment the network flows if they are not interfering with each other so that we can maximize the concurrency of the simulator with multiprocessing. So the flow segmentation is dynamic and, and, and it's also adaptive. With this optimization, we're able to simulate tens of thousands of GPUs in a cluster and estimate the flow assignment for millions of concurrent flows within seconds. Now moving to the next core component, which is the AI workload synthesizer, and this serves as the input of our simulator. To improve the fidelity of our simulation results, we calibrate all of our AI workloads using a data-driven approach, where we collect the production workload traces, extracting the key features such as the trace length and the graph structure and job sizes, or the compute, memory, collective nodes, dependencies, and the message sizes, tensor sizes, etc. And we learn from our production data using a unsupervised learning, such as some clustering algorithms or generative AI algorithms, to learn the underlying latent distribution and then pick representative traces from those distributions such that the synthesized workload can best represent all different kinds of workloads in the entire training cluster. OK, now since we have finished the system design, we can talk about some use cases of Arcadia. So as our first use case, we use Arcadia to evaluate the key factors that affects the training cluster utilization and fragmentation. Identify and quantify the impact will help us better design our systems that improves the efficiency of our compute and network resource usage. As our simulation settings, we have a cluster of a given size. Here we have 1,000, 2,000, and 4,000 GPUs in a cluster, and a set of jobs that are sampled from the job size distribution. And this distribution is, is the same as our production distribution. And these jobs has a runtime distribution that is also sampled from production. And when the job arrived, 
if it if we could not find a slot, then the job will be put into a waiting queue. And the waiting queue has a fixed length, and it is always full. And a job will get added to the queue after a job gets admitted in the cluster. And jobs at the head of the queue will always have a higher priority of admission than the job at the tail of the queue. So that's basically the job scheduling algorithm that we're simulating. Some key takeaways we found here is that if the job size in the cluster are larger, it tends to have a higher fragmentation and longer waiting time. And this is actually expected since there will be less chance for a larger training job to find a slot to fit in. And for the same reason, if the cluster size is large, the fragmentation will be actually lower. But the efficiency gain is diminishing when we grow the size. And there are also some other interesting findings. For example, we observed that the fragmentation of the cluster is not very sensitive to the job runtime. So if a cluster has a lot of long-running jobs, comparing with a cluster with a lot of short-lived jobs, as long as the job size distribution are similar, the fragmentation will be actually pretty close. Now let's see some results regarding the training and the inference performance. So we simulated for different network bandwidths, and we found that the performance is improved with higher network bandwidths, but with diminishing return, again, since the bottleneck is gradually shifted from network to the compute and memory latency. And from a network perspective, we also show that if we have a higher flow entropy in our oversubscribed network, there will be less network congestion and hence we will have a higher training speed and better performance. But same as bandwidth, the return is diminishing and as we grow the entropy of the flows. And we also observe that the size of the training shard will determine the peak performance of the training. By training shard, we usually refers to a subgroup of accelerators that connected with higher speed links like NV links, which should always be placed as close as possible in the data center. Okay, so here is our use cases. So now I will give back to Satatis to talk about the limitations of Arcadia. Thank you, Zardong. We'll now talk about limitations. For future AI models, size of workloads, model characteristics, communication pattern are hard to predict because a set of applications are envisioned, but they have not been explored. A set of optimizations in each of these applications may result in different trends in how these models would evolve. It may be a function of different initiatives in different infrastructure vertical, like compute, network, and how they land over time. In the absence of precise set of models, we typically work with a set of scenarios and we try to estimate the best case and the worst case performance of a model in a cluster. It should be noted that we are only providing a simulator that provides how model will run in, an, in the infrastructure provided. It does not provide any insights on how the model will perform. Essentially, we are not telling if there is a ranking job, we are not providing insights on how good the output of that ranking job is. It is hard to share model details without sharing the architecture of the model. There is a need for a common framework, essentially an agreed format for execution traces to help share the model details without sharing the proprietary information about the problem statement. Let's talk about next steps. One of the key initiatives that we plan to develop is to provide a framework that can assist network operational engineers to perform all the production activities in such a way that they can understand the impact of their actions on production jobs. For example, if an operational engineer is performing a drain of a network switch, they should be able to gather insights on what is the performance degradation observed by jobs that are running in the cluster, essentially an after effect of the action. This is a very simple example. A more involved example would be to suggest a set of models 
that should be removed from the cluster or placed elsewhere so that a particular drain of a switch can be performed in such a way that there is no perform performance impact on the remaining jobs. This signal can be used by the orchestrator that is placing workloads in the cluster. Another example would be to provide job placement insights in, with an objective to maximize the overall utilization of the cluster. Another key initiative is to develop a framework where a set of known models can be run over different design variations. For example, different topologies, different routing algorithms to provide design insights that can be used for architectural selection. This may include surfacing key bottlenecks in compute, memory, and network, and their overall impact on model performance. Surfacing implications of component reliability on overall model performance. Providing insights on how different model parameters can be optimized for a given cluster. For a given architectural evaluation, this can help you understand the ROI for an initiative. For execution traces, we plan to support Chakra execution traces as an input format for Arcadia. Chakra is being developed by a working group in ML Commons. It's an open graph based representation of workloads. Chakra execution traces capture key operations such as compute, memory, and communication, different dependencies, and different constraints. This will help us support both internal and external use cases and will provide transparency to both internal users and external vendors about our simulation results. There is a blog post about Arcadia in our portal. I now thank you all for listening to this talk and we are now open for questions.